Good morning or afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is David Pearson with Live View Technology. We're going to get started here in about one minute with our our amazing webinar today on on acoustic threat detection. Um, so again, we'll get started in just about one minute. And uh, thank you so much for coming. Okay, again, thank you everyone for coming out here. I'm really excited today uh, to talk about acoustic threat detection with our, our speakers. Uh, we have Brandon Wolf. Uh, he is the, the VP of product and product management R&D uh, for LiveView Technology and, and Rob Oldham, who's the Director of Business Development and Strategic Partnerships with ACOM, uh, our new newest partner who, who specializes in acoustic threat detection. Um, Brandon, Rob, do you want to introduce yourselves really quick before we get going? Absolutely. Welcome, everybody. We're excited to be here today and be chatting. Um, I'm uh, Brandon Wolf, LiveView Technologies. Uh, we've got some really cool stuff. We're partnering with uh, ACOM, and so we've got Rob on the line here as well. We're going to tell you all about it. Uh, get you guys excited about gunshot detection. We know there's a lot of interest and need in the market today for gunshot detection. And so we're we're partnering to get, to have an incredible solution for you. Yeah, thanks, Brandon. Rob Oldham here um, with ACOM, uh, specializing in the acoustic threat detection. And again, super excited uh, to be here today. Um, looking forward to this new partnership with LiveView Technologies and the force multiplication that we're gonna talk about today, what we're doing together. Fantastic, thank you both. Uh, just as a, a quick matter of, of housekeeping, so we are gonna have some Q&A at the end. There should be on your, your dashboard a little area that says questions. Uh, so feel free during the presentation to, to put your questions in there and we'll get to them at the end. And if there are any questions that we don't get to, then we'll make sure to answer those for you personally afterwards. Okay, Brandon, I will pass it off to you. Take it away. All right, so let me give you a quick summary of LiveView Technologies. Uh, you're probably familiar, but uh, rapid deploy units. Uh, we put all sorts of technology on these units. You can deploy them anywhere, harsh weather conditions, high temperature, low temperature, and they last for days and days, but they're on solar power as well, so they last ultimately indefinitely uh, and incredibly high uptime, alerts, notifications, uh, eyes on the ground, get you the information you need at the time you need it. And we're seeing um, more and more need from our customers for a really good gunshot detection. And we'll go into a little, those, a little of those details in a little bit, but um, we've partnered with ACOM, done a whole bunch of tests and um, are pairing our technologies together to come up with what you need. So we'll, we'll roll into a little bit about acoustic um, gunshot detection today and go into those details, talk about pros, talk about cons, talk about the technology that ACOM has and how we're partnering together. And hopefully you guys have some questions we can answer for you today too. Yeah, so I'll go ahead and jump in on this section here. So um, what is acoustic threat detection? Uh, and really what we're doing is we're looking for the acoustic signals. Um, so, you know, traditionally in the security space, uh, we, we relied heavily on the surveillance aspect or the pixel base, you know, the video, the surveillance cameras. Um, but there is a whole other section or application of the acoustics piece of it. Um, and so we're going to use the term a lot about force multiplication. Um, specifically today, we're going to focus on the gunshot aspect, although I will uh, talk a little bit about our roadmap and some future releases that we have in the very near future. Um, kind of moving into the need, uh, it, it's, I think it goes in many ways without saying, but there's definitely a need in today's world. Um, we've had this year alone over 425 mass shootings, and that is defined as four or more people injured or killed, um, and that's excluding the shooter. And for many, many years, the federal government didn't even have a way or didn't have a defined way to track what a mass shooting was. 
or to or it never it doesn't even today have its own separate category of that crime um, but it has become such a pandemic that it is starting to be uh, tracked much more um, intensely and you you've got an average of 1.9 mass shootings per day um, and that's in the u.s alone um, so what we find is hearing the shot isn't enough. Um, my background personally, uh, I started out in the military when I was 17 years old and I've spent a fair amount of time in the Middle East and I've been shot at, I've been fired upon. And even to the trained ear, uh, it, it, it can be very difficult to distinguish where that shooter is or where that shot's coming from, um, let alone the, ever, the, the civilian that, that thinks they hear a gunshot and to distinguish between is that a gunshot or is that a vehicle backfiring? Where's the shooter? And so when you get a 911 call that comes in, it typically takes several minutes just to find where that shooter is um, or to find out if that actually is a shooter. Um, and then that, you know, your average um, shooter hits a new person every 15 to 30 seconds. So when you look at the time involved, if why I'm passionate about acoustic threat detection and why I see substantial value teaming with LiveView personally is if we can save time and respond more effectively, then we can absolutely save lives. So some of the stuff you brought up there, Rob, are interesting uh, because when people think about acoustic, they think about sound. So it's listening to the to the gunshot detection. Um, tell us a little bit about how you guys detect. You know, first of all, there's the whole range thing that we need to talk about. You know, you've got the sensor. Range is an important thing because you can't have one of these every 20 feet in your entire area you're trying to sur survey. So tell us a little bit about range and then we'll go from there. Yeah, yeah. So um, you can go ahead and hit the next slide and we'll kind of di dive into a little bit. So what's very interesting and game changing about the ACOM ATD, so it's an acronym that we use, Acoustic Threat Detection. Um, so you'll hear me say that several times today. Um, but our ACOM ATD technology, we have the ability to triangulate with one sensor. So we don't have to have or deploy multiple sensors throughout a large area and have them connect and crosstalk to triangulate. So the fit is really nice with the LVT, the LiveU technology solution, because we could deploy a portable uh, virtually anywhere and it could be as little as one, one portable and we can give you that triangulation. Um, and we our, our area of coverage is 500 feet in any direction. So 360 degrees, we cover 500 feet out. Um, and where we're unique and where this technology was derived is we've been doing this for over 40 years. We started out um, with submarine detection. And then in the mid 90s, we were tasked by NATO to develop a technology to be used specifically in Sniper Alley um, in the Bosnia Sarajevo conflict. Um, and subsequently, since that time, we've been successfully deployed through virtually every major combat zone um, where we work with um, over 20 plus different military entities globally. Um, and so our routes run very deep, being deployed on vehicles, moving vehicles, uh, forward operating bases. Um, and we've been able to use that technology and deregulate or declassify it for the commercial space. Um, and all those years that we've had to be able to train our AI um, and our neural networks to be able to distinguish what a gunshot is acoustically as it compares to other sound signatures or pulsonic sounds. So we're, we're very accurate at that and we work really well. We'll talk a little bit more about how we perform with the background or, or ambient level noise. Um, so we can we can move on and talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I'd love to ask also, you know, some of the stuff we've talked about, um, is it important for you on weapon classification types, types of weapons? Um, yeah, so we we look we we detect any any arm. So we've done testing, substantial testing with even surprising, believe it or not, shotgun. Um, where we our technology was derived from the military from combat zones. That was actually surprising to me because the shotgun is not typically a lethal weapon in a combat zone. It's more of a close range, um, close close quarters type weapon. And we, with LiveView, in our testing that we've done, we, we did shotgun um, with birdshot and buckshot, and we, act, we very accurately detected that, as well as 22 um, small arms fire, so, you know, 9 millimeter, 40, 45, all the way up to 308, 50 cal. Naturally, the larger the caliber, the easier it is to detect, but even down as small as a 22 caliber, um, we detect. 
And, and if you look at the images here, you can see kind of a, a 360 view, if you will, or a 2D view of our sensor as, it, as it's opened up. And we have a mi miniaturized array of microphones built into it. Um, everything's edge-based, so all of our AI and our processors and everything are out at the edge. So we don't require any additional software or licensing um, or a, an additional server to run our, our artificial intelligence. That's all edge-based. Um, and then on the right, you'll see the, those are the little antennas coming off the top. Those are simply bird spikes. So the size, a lot of folks always ask, well, how large is it, you know, and, and it, is it aesthetically pleasing or is it going to really be bulky? How do I mount it? And that's another really nice thing about our partnership here is the sensor is very small. It's about the size of a mini dome camera. Um, it can be painted to blend in uh, as necessary and it's, it only draws six watts of power. So when we talk about being deployed out at the edge and running off solar power, uh, we are very light. Um, uh, six watts of power is, is equivalent to an LED light bulb or even less. So we know it's got a, a really solid range. All these points are really important for why we partnered with you as well, because we're deploying these units. We didn't want to have to have one of these sensors every 50 feet. Um, I will say though, uh, detecting the type of weapon, the directionality, where it came from. One thing we haven't talked about is um, whether whether the gunshot was fired within range or whether the bullet came into range, the whole ballistic detection. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, that's a really good question, Brandon. So within our um, very conservative range of 500 feet, which is again, very conservative, we give you the latitude and the longitude of the shooter. Um, and we, the, another really powerful feature that we do um, is we slew to cue. Uh, and for those of you that don't know what that is, we move the camera. So you saw um, those who have done business and are familiar with Live View Solution. And if you're not, you know, there's typically a pan tilt zoom camera associated. And that camera will move upon a gunfire. Um, we, will move, we will detect it and we will move the camera to the threat. Uh, giving you the ability to know exactly who the threat is, um, not just the fact that you have a threat and where it came from, but who is your trigger puller? Who are you looking for? Um, and that's a, a, a very, very big force multiplier. Um, so, so again, outside of that range, to get more specific on your question, Brandon, if we're outside of 500 feet and we will talk, so, that we, you know, as we talk about the results of our test fire that we've done, um, we went out with Live View further because we detected at 100% accuracy all of the gunshots. And so naturally, we wanted to see how we could break it. Um, so we went out substantially further than the 500 foot range. And at 865 feet uh, with a 223 uh, and a 556 caliber, uh, which is essentially an AR 15, um, and a 308 caliber, we detected those shots um, out that far. And what's interesting about that is the actual distance is one thing, um, but the ambient noise level, it was extremely loud. And we have this report that um, I believe that we're gonna be sharing after this webinar uh, with those who joined, but our average DB level um, was 86.7. So it was an extremely windy day, which brings in a whole slew of challenges. Um, 86 DB, if you look at, so, 90 dB uh, is deemed to cause human damage after eight hours. So if you have 90 dB uh, and you're listening to it, the human ear, after eight hours of that, you will have hearing damage. So 86.7 is quite loud. Um, we had measurements as high as 114 dB, which is equivalent to an airplane, a jet engine taking off um, at 300 meter range. So it was, it was very loud. We were very accurate. Um, and again, when, when you get outside of that 500 foot range, it off, especially with ambient noise, it can be difficult to detect the muzzle blast. Um, and so we look for the, the ballistic, we look for the projectile. Uh, when we can detect the muzzle blast and the projectile, then we can give you the coordinates. We can actually slew to cue the camera to the shooter. If they're outside of that range, um, then generally we, we know we have sniper fire. We know we're getting shot at. It's, it becomes more difficult to understand exactly that range. So we always try to be conservative and design our solution around that 500 foot range. Awesome. 
Uh, one of the things I think that's really interesting with this technology too is is uh, multiple shooters uh, within the same range and how uh, on the live unit you can have you know a multiple number of cameras, typically three to five cameras on there, and you could you can technically detect multiple shooters and have cameras do different things with Saluda Q. So it's it's a really cool uh, use case. Yeah, Brandon, what we find generally is when you have a shooter, there, there's a couple scenarios. So be, our range of coverage, we're not dependent on the camera happen to see the shooter. The camera could be looking somewhere else. When there is a shot fired, we move the camera to the shooter. So we can cover a very large range. We can deploy, be deployed very quickly. Um, so it could be uh, an event and it might be a temporary event, a week long, let's say. We can, with Live View, we can drop the, the portables there and we can be strategic of where we place them and we can cover a very large area and they could be moved around um, because again we're not we're reliant on seeing the shooter um, we don't we don't have to we, we can move the camera as as necessary to the shooter's location which gives you that actionable data who it is you're looking for if you have multiple shooters same thing we detect those shots and we bounce that camera around to where those shooters are. So if they continue to shoot and move, we will continue to follow them and give give and provide real-time actionable data. And on top of that, we also naturally have those the videos recorded. Um, so with LiveView, we're bookmarking, we're creating an event and we're bookmarking that video. Uh, we also have the ability with LiveView technology to do live talk down. Um, so with the speakers that you offer, we can do live talk down which can, in many cases, act as a delay mechanism. Um, it can introduce confusion to the shooter, um, and, it, and it can also add instruction to persons that are on ground. Of should they shelter in place? Where should they go? And that can be a pre-recorded message, uh, an emergency notification for other portables that may not be in the area, but they may be near the area, so we can provide real-time instruction audible to, to people that may be near that threat zone. Um, but we can also deter and do that, again, live talk down, which is a really good advantage and a feature. Um, and in, in this slide here, you can see how we operate. So that's an obvious question is, okay, how do you do in good conditions? But then even more importantly, how do you do in degraded conditions? Um, so a lot of vehicles maybe in the area, like a, let's say a parking lot, for example, you have a lot of traffic noise. Um, we, we our, our artificial intelligence and our neural networks are trained again, with over 40 years of experience to be able to distinguish what that gunshot looks like. Um, and you can kind of see that here, the signatures, the acoustic signatures that we detect and how we're able to dissect that data and know that that is indeed a muzzle blast and a ballistic as it travels. Awesome, yeah. So um, what other what other parts of the technology do you think you want to highlight? Was there anything else uh, as far as pros of the system yeah um so you know the the main pro again is j maybe just as a little bit of a recap and in case i missed anything um the main is we are sick we draw six watts of power um the size of our device is very small easily deployed and it can work with as little as one sensor so um you know we don't require multiple sensors to to be successfully de deployed um another beautiful thing is the way that we initiate our alarms um, we're open platform, so you know, obviously with LiveView, we we have an all-in-one solution, but we also have the ability to integrate with other solutions, um, so other head-end units, so like computer-aided dispatch that law enforcement uses. Um, we send our alerts and our alarms via HTTP, so we're open standard in regards to that. Um, one thing that's unique and and nice about LiveView and and Acquem is the ability we have to be open platform, so. We have the ability to run on multiple camera platforms. Um, so we're not a proprietary system that we say, this is the camera model and brand you have to use. Um, we can work with virtually any open platform solution. Um, so that's a big thing. <clears throat> and I already mentioned our power draw. Our low power draw for these mobile units is, is a big game changer. Um, when you're being deployed out at the edge and you don't have power, so we're reliant on solar. Um, and a day like today in Utah where we're at, you know, it's really cloudy and it's rainy and it, it could be this way for several days. So the solar may not provide, you know, several weeks. You might have to kick the generator on in some applications. Um, we're, again, pulling very, very low power. So 
we're going to help enhance the overall solution. Um, yeah. And one other thing too is, you know, the ability that, that that we offer with LiveView is is the support agreements. You know, the the warranty, our longevity, our product has was born and bred being in really nasty environments, very hot, very cold, very dusty, very dirty. Um, and ever-changing environments. So again, to be able to be moved around and be able to be used in numerous applications is a big game changer. Awesome, yeah. We love all those features. That's part That's part of the reason why we're partnering, just because uh, it, it just checks all the boxes for us. So thank you for building a great product. Um, you know, we, we, paint, we paint a very pretty picture here. I think to get to get down a, a little bit real here, we need to talk about where are some disadvantages? What should what should people be expecting if they go with the acoustic based? We all know, we've all heard of the concussion based. We've all, we've heard of the, uh, I don't know if they call it aggregate, but some, some do the flash of the gun plus the, uh, plus some movement of the bullet in, in the air. There's, there's other technologies out there. Um, tell us um, some of your thoughts around, you know, where, where could the system be tricked? Yeah, very, very good question, Brandon. So we, um, we know every application is different and we certainly don't ever claim to be able to defy logic or defy physics um, and so we work very closely as a team LiveView and Aquam to understand where the, these solutions get deployed we also know that they could be deployed and then moved so it may be in one location in one environment for several months and then it may be moved somewhere else and it may be a completely different environment, an area that has a lot of surrounding concrete or brick buildings. So you get a lot of reverberation, a lot of echoing. Um, and those do create some challenges. And so the way that we work around that or mitigate are several, several fold. Um, we have the ability for our technology. Our technology is ever learning. Um, so our AI engine, uh, it has the ability to learn the environment and that's, that comes in very, nice in tough applications. So I mentioned areas where you have a lot of echoing. Um, if it's a large open area, uh, we do really well uh, without really any problems at all. Um, but when you get into tight environments with a lot of reverberation, it can become a challenge. And in those cases, we typically want to run for uh, three to six weeks um, to learn that environment. And we have the ability to record any alarms and train our AI model around that. So we know that, okay, that's not a gunshot. That's somebody trying to trick our sensor. Um, we've done with LiveU a, a substantial amount of testing to try and trick or fool the sensor and the AI into thinking that a gunshot, it was a gunshot when it was indeed a, a car backfire, uh, pallets dropping on the floor, banging boards together. We've even taken large rocks and sticks to the actual mass, to the trailers, the live view trailers, um, and done a lot of banging. Um, and so, and we've done extremely well. Um, in fact, you, you'll see the report. So we had zero false positives. Now, that being said, we're never gonna say we have, we're, we're gonna be deployed anywhere and have zero false positives because physics come into it. But that's why we have a professional team. We have acoustic engineers and we have the ability to learn those environments so when we get deployed in a tough environment we will we'll learn that environment we'll train it against anything that's causing us any issues so hopefully that answers that question a couple things too we have the ability to detect sniper fire um, far outside that 500 foot radius we also have the ability to distinguish uh, fireworks from gunshots and our firework detection is 150 feet out so it's it's substantially less than a gunshot for a variety of reasons, um, namely that there's not a projectile that's traveling through the air. Um, so we have the ability to disable the sniper detection and the firework detection, which raises the bar or of the accuracy of our technology um, when it comes to false positives. Um, we also on our roadmap um, have a few new, new releases that are coming, um, namely broken glass detection, uh, elevated voice detection, and explosion detection. Now, each of these three applications come with their own challenges, um, because you know now if you're doing, especially if you're trying to run all three at the same time. Um, so these are all things that we take into account, and we work very closely together with the LiveView engineering team and the Aquam to make sure that our solution is being deployed in an area where you see the results that you need.
Awesome. Well, we're super stoked about uh, what we've been able to. We've tested like crazy. Um, we've we we love the technology. Uh, we've integrated the technology. We're excited as we're going to market with this combined solution. It's a full solution. Uh, you can drop it anywhere you want. Uh, talked about a lot of the benefits and features. We're also excited about the roadmap and how that that continues out to be built out. But this is some pretty awesome technology, and we're excited to to bring it to our potential customers. Yeah, I just I just want to add too. I mean, the, it's it's been really amazing to see the force multiplication of the two companies together. Um, what Livey is able to do, whether it's a capital expenditure and and you know we can deploy our solution as a whole and and the end customer owns it and it's theirs and then we support it, or if it's an operation expenditure, so they they lease the service, they might only need it for a couple months um, for a major event or what have you. And, and that's, that's a big game changer as well. So we have the ability to respond very quickly um, and, and push these pro the, the solution out to the customers that need it. And we're not reliant on you know, power, data, software, servers, all these peripherals that typically take, can take months to, to figure out um, and to get installed in order to deploy our solution. We can, we can respond and be deployed very quickly and effectively. And from a pricing perspective, we're very, very competitive. Again, we don't need multiple sensors. We don't charge, um, from the Aquam perspective for our AI and our technology, we don't charge a reoccurring over and over every year fee, um, which, which makes it a, a big differentiator. And the technology continues to get better. We all know that the security industry tech is moving very, at a very rapid pace, and that's that rings true at Aquam. We are investing substantially in the solution that we have. and so we will continue to bring new advancements to the market. Yeah, and I love that you pointed out the, the mobility of the product uh, and, the, and the, the breadth of use cases. I mean, we've got police forces that are dropping these things where there's a hot spot or where, and, and it might only be there for a week and then they move it somewhere else. Um, we've got construction companies, we've got big box retail. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Wherever there's a threat potential, um, schools, uh, et cetera, you can, you can put these out where you need them and then move, decide to move them if you want to a higher risk area. Yeah, Brandon, a, a good case in point too, and we're, we have, I think, one minute left. Um, so just to kind of wrap it up, um, I was looking at, so I attended a, a city council meeting of a major U.S. city uh, last week, and I won't name the city, but um, they presented some data that came from the NICJR, the National Institute of Criminal Justice Reform. And for anybody that wants to Google that, the data is on their website, and they've they've got it broken down for many major cities throughout the U.S. And they've done studies on what the cost per shooting, if it's an injury, and if it's a homicide, and the cost to a community. And we're just talking from a city perspective. We're not talking if it's a retailer or a school, um, but the cost per one single homicide in this specific city was 1.6 million dollars. And that's when you break down the costs of, of everything involved, the police response, the hospital, you know, I mean, the, 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 the people that don't want to go in those areas anymore. I mean, it's, it's very vast and they detail it out. So it's very intriguing to, to understand. Um, and then the cost per injury is $1.1 million. Um, so having the ability to do something about it, um, you know, we can't always stop a, a shooting. But if we can, again, to how we started out with this presentation, this discussion was if we can respond quicker and more effectively. So if we can give you eyes on and use the cameras to move to where that shooter is and give you that intelligible data um, and we can potentially save lives. Well, thank you, Rob. Great discussion today. I think we do have some q and I'll turn it I'll turn it back over. Yes, thank you, Brandon and Rob. Um, we do have some questions that are, are coming in. And again, if you do have additional questions, we are going to be answering them live here. Um, Rob, someone, uh, Rick, wanted to know if we have this information or any of this in Spanish. Um, he has a, a project in South America that he's working on. He says that this would be a great add-on for it. Very good question. Um, I don't believe as of right now that we have it in Spanish, although collectively between Aquim and LiveView, we are working, we have several initiatives in South and Central America. 
Um, I believe some of what we offer, especially on the live view side, we do have it in Spanish. Um, my suggestion on this, though, is if we could take that one offline um, and just put us in touch with Rick directly, we will. I, I Within a few days, we could get everything to you in Spanish. That shouldn't be a problem. I personally speak Spanish, so um, it's a little rusty, but we could we could definitely get you squared away. Okay. Well, thank you, Rick, for for that. Um, so, uh, Russell has a has a question that just came in, um, wanting to know how do silencers or or noise suppression on on firearms affect the sensor detection and yeah, have we run good. any tests with that so we have and we haven't seen any degradation so the the silencer um or suppressor uh suppresses the muzzle blast um and so but in our range of 500 feet we're very conservative with detecting the muzzle blast um and then outside of that the ballistic and like i mentioned before the ballistic or projectile we can detect far outside of that 500 foot radius. Um, so we, we haven't seen any issues within our stated or specified range with suppressors. Um, we do, we are running some tests later this, uh, later this month um, and into the first week of September where we will have a variety of different silencers and different calibers um, that we will be testing and, and generating some videos showing those live, live shots with that. Um, so keep an eye on our website. The specific website from Aquim, um, because Aquim has a lot of subsidiaries, a lot of different solutions we provide, but specific to the threat detection, it's just Aquim, ATD, so Alpha, Tango, Delta, so acoustic threat detection, so AquimATD.com, and we will have on our YouTube channel and on our website um, those videos coming out soon. Well, fantastic. Um, so we do have another question coming in just about, again, reiterating some of the um, the real world applications for, for noisy metropolitan areas. Um, so talk about how something, this solution would be deployed in say New York City um, that, that just has a high ambient noise. Yep, that's a really good question. So. When you get into a major city like that, especially where they have high-rise buildings, um, there obviously is going to be challenges. And and I would be the last one. And and at Aquem, that's that's we we firmly believe that you purchase this product and the solution, it's got to work. Um, so we work very closely with our end users and our partners like LabVIEW to gain a really in-depth understanding of of the application. Um, a site survey, especially in an application like that, is, is required, and we offer that um, because you will have reverberation. You will have obstacles that block our ability to detect a ballistic um, and the muzzle flash in a lot of areas. And sometimes that means you're going to need more sensors. Like even we talked about our 500-foot radius. Well, if you have multiple buildings and we're in an alleyway, I'm not probably going to detect a muzzle blast or a ballistic three or four alleys over it's just not physically possible. And I mentioned that before, we never, we don't wanna to claim to defy physics. So that would be what I would consider um, an application that we would need to do a ride along and a site survey on, and we help hand in hand design the solution from the ground up. Um, if it's an area like a neighborhood, we've lately had a lot of success um, with smaller police departments in the areas of concern. So we look at the high crime areas, areas where they've had a lot of shots fired, we do a survey with the police department and we understand those applications. And a lot of times it's temporary. We, we deploy a mobile solution with LiveView in those areas and we find who our shooters are. Um, so again, the tough applications, those will always require a site survey and support from our team to, to design it. Thank you so much. That's a perfect answer. Um, we have a question from Mike really quick he just wants to know how to get that report so mike i will be personally sending that out to to everybody immediately after this webinar um so all people who registered will be getting that um that report uh sent directly to them um so and then we have time for one final question it's from william um he wants to know what the time frame 
needed for a site survey is. So if a site survey is determined, how quickly can you get the solution deployed um, if that site survey is, is needed? Yep, yep. So right now we're running on a 30 day, typically two weeks to 30 days max um, to get out on site to do to do a ride along and a site survey. Um, and again, that's for the, the more difficult so, applications. You know, a lot of times Google Earth and Street View give us a lot of good data, especially to get you budgetary pricing and a design. Um, you know, we you know, Google Earth and Street View help a lot. But but yeah. Um, typically two weeks to 30 days. So he, William did provide a little bit of additional information on that. So he is in uh, New York City. And so their deployment of the unit, it sounds like would uh, change from, from day to day. Um, so how would that work in, in a case where it's maybe in one uh, New York uh, busy city street and then a couple days later, a week later, they move it to another hotspot location. Yeah, yeah, no, this is a really good question. So, so what we typically do, um, the way I like to explain it, and this is kind of a broad stroke, um, but if you have, so we're a force multiplication factor to having the video, the visual verification, right? So if you can see where you want to see, so let's say you have a shooter. And we want to be able to see who it was. And we're going to slew to cue the camera to that shooter. Um, so where you want to try and deploy these are areas where the camera will have its best opportunity to capture that shooter. Um, and I know it's oftentimes way easier said than done, um, but that is a general rule of thumb, is if you have line of sight from the camera, you'll certainly have line of sight from our sensor to detect the gunshot. So in a challenging environment where you have a lot of obstacles and a lot of buildings and high rises and things that could obstruct that view, you might need more, you're, generally speaking, you're gonna need more of this of the um, live view solutions. Um, so it's just, those are things to keep in mind. You wanna try to pick areas where you're gonna get that good line of sight with the camera though, as best you can. It doesn't mean we're not gonna still pick up the gunshot, but you know the camera will move to where that gunshot came from or where the shooter was. But if you know there's obstacles and buildings and things in the way, it's going to be a little more difficult to see who that shooter was. Obviously, if they keep moving and shooting, we're going to continue to detect and move the camera. So hopefully that answers the question. I mean, again, it's not a it's not a perfect answer because it is kind of a broad stroke. But that's my general rule of thumb: is you want to try to get the best line of sight with the camera that you can. Fantastic, and um, thank every, thank you all. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, thank you, Brandon, for for taking the time to, to talk with us today. This has been a fantastic presentation. This is a technology that we are really excited about here. Um, we take security and, and surveillance and protection very seriously, and and we know for a fact that this is going to save lives, um, and that's what our whole whole goal is here as a company. Um, if anyone does want to learn more about LiveView technology, um, feel free to email us directly or call us um, or fill out any of the forms on, on lvt.com. Um, and, and we will also get you in touch with, with Rob if you are just interested in the, the acoustic uh, threat detection and just the, just the sensors. And Rob, what's a, what's a good email for them to, to reach you at? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. So my email address is rob.oldham, just like you, you should see hopefully below my below my um, beautiful face here in the video. Uh, so just rob.oldham, and then it's at acoem, so that's A-C-O-E-M, acoem.com. And yeah, feel free to email okay, me, thanks. and we can go from there. Okay, well, thank you so much, and and... We thank you all for coming and taking the time out of your busy days to, to learn with us. Uh, thank you so much, and, and we'll see you at the next webinar. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everybody.